What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy back at you again. Way tomorrow, way tomorrow. And it's been a little bit, little bit, little while since I uploaded an actual video. But this video is about Right Burn. It is a semi rant slash review. So, Right Burn is pretty much the story of Evil Superman or preferably Ultraman, right? So, it's just too bad though because, you know, uh, James Gunn and WB didn't sign on this project together and, you know, create this as an Elseworlds story inside the universe they already have, which is what are, was supposed to be the worlds of DC, or I don't know what it is now, DC EU. I don't know what it is at this point, um, but that's another topic for another video. But yeah, this is about Brightburn. So Brightburn starts off talking about Brefix and the kids there, and then the kid starts discovering, or he starts having you know, puberty and stuff like that. He's growing up, he's 12 years old. And then what happens is, you know, yeah, he's getting a little, you know, wishy-washy, little horror aspects, a little supernatural here and there. Cause he's an alien, he doesn't know that yet. You know what I'm saying? Then he figures out he's adopted and he's special and he came down from another planet and he's gonna take the world, which is completely utter crap because it doesn't really happen like that. You know, and of course it's not gonna happen like that because this is Hollywood, baby. We're going to cash in a couple sequels. We're going to milk this franchise. We're going to turn it into a franchise, even though it might not need to be a franchise, which is the problem I have with this film. This film is a nice film in the sense of superhero movies to come, in the sense of the genre, in the sense of, you know, let's see something different. And what ends up happening here is that, you know, you have a nice property, a nice product, and it plays kind of smoothly semi then it's not that smooth you know like the pacing is very wishy-washy um the film feels more more of like a reaction film to bright burns or to briar or brandon Breyer's story about the, by the way my bad my bad guys it should say spoiler in, in the title though but anyways i've been sipping so this is a spoiler review but anyways, back to back to the review at hand, the semi rant at hand, a little saucy there, there. But yes, this film is good. I don't think it's the worst film of all time. I don't think it's a bad film. I definitely think it's better than Chronicle, which Chronicle, as we know, is highly praised. And I think that this does a better job because you can clearly see that it's Superman. You can clearly see that it's Ultraman. You can clearly see that it's an evil Superman. You can clearly see that it's Superman from Injustice. You know, which that doesn't really make sense because he's Superman before he snaps the, you know, um, Joker's neck. And then he turns into that Superman. So it's not Superman from Injustice. I've heard people say that or make that correlation or comparison, which is pretty false. But anyways, back to the review. So my biggest issue with this film is that, you know, this kid, he learns how to speak his language in a matter of days, which is... I guess it's okay, you know, he is the one-tenth out of the tenth, which is kind of interesting, but overall, you don't really see as much genius-level intellect displayed in this film throughout the film, and this film, as I've said before, and, and what I really think all of it is, all it sums out to is it's just a reaction of what Brandon Byers can do, and it's cool in the sense of it's a first film of a series maybe but it's also shite because that's not what i paid to go see you know overall the story is what i come to for i come to the theater for and i came there the story was somewhat interesting and then you know you, you hear this guy he, he figures out his language brandon figures out his language and it's take the world and i'm like okay take the fucking world do what you gotta do man do you you know that's your story that's what you're gonna do that's your destiny you're the new thanos Go wipe everybody out, man. Go do your thing. You know what I'm saying? You're Superman. There's no Batman in this universe. There's no none of that. There's no there's no conflicting, you know, neighbors or there's there's no Jimmy Olsen. There's no there's no uh Bilbo, you know, there's there's nothing in this universe to stop this Superman from ending up as, you know, this disgusting habit, this disgusting thing that walks the nights and, you know, kills people in planes and destroys stuff and leaves destruction wherever its path takes it to and the problem with that story is that that's that's not what we get you know we get to take your world take the world stuff and the ending of the film which is a fucking joke okay we see michael rooker 
He's on YouTube. He's one of those fucking activist guys or whatever you call him. Uh, you know, one of those guys on YouTube that gets all fucking their panties in a bunch and they're like, you know, shouting shit out and stuff like that. They think they're woke or whatever they are or they're opposing sides and they're very loud. Whatever. That's cool. You do you. But I do it also. Everybody does it. You know, that's, you know, hey, we're all on equal footing here. But overall, Brightburn sucks because it doesn't display the take the world. It's like, I don't need to see a sequel. I don't need to see a, you know, a sequel baiting film. I've, I'm so tired of it, you know? And it's sad because it's like, you know, I understand why people want to make franchises and why every film that comes out nowadays is a sequel baiting ending which is fucking trash, you know, I saw it on Escape Plan, I've seen it in Game of Thrones now, I've seen it in multiple things, it's like, I don't want a spin-off, don't want an extra movie, I just want to watch this film, I just want to watch this film, you know, <laughs> not everybody has to be the MCU, not everybody has to be the DCU, not everybody has to be the Fast and Furious universe, not everybody has to be the Harry Potter universe, we don't need franchises with every single film, and By- Brightburn is one of those films where you say to yourself, you know, why? Why did you go and do that? Why? What, what, what is this? You know, and the writing in this film is it, it's good. But when you think about the characters and you think about where it's leading them and the story's leading them, it's really dumb. And you can't excuse it with just, oh, uh, uh, Brandon Byers, an alien. He doesn't, you know, he hits puberty. He changes. And there's some kind of, you know, it's alien heritage is speaking to him and it's altering his mind. And they're taking, we don't know what's really happening in the Brandon. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. I tried to think about it. And I'm not saying I watched so much YouTube videos. I did not. I just, I thought that it could be excused at first. But then when I think about the story more and more and more, I say to myself, man, this film, the biggest issue with this film is not that it's a Superman ripoff. Not that it's not titled Ultraman. It's that it's based off a low budget. You know, and you see what this film can do, and it's based off of its low budget. Its budget does not have what it is required to see the take the world things happen, you know? And yeah, you could easily say that could happen in a sequel, but when you think about this story, this story, let's get into the story now, guys. Let's get into the juice, pump your brakes, let's do it, right? So when you think about this story, right? This kid is genius intellect. He doesn't know what he can do. Of course, that's cool. You know, he, um, he has his uh, feelings. He's a 12-year-old. If I were a 12-year-old and I had powers the next morning, hell, I'd probably act on certain things. I'd probably snap a fucking girl's entire hand into a goddamn pastry piece of, piece of paper. I'd probably crumble it up. You know, if she didn't like me. If I was 12-year-old and I'm really angsty, yeah, maybe. But the thing that I do not understand is this kid is he's smart, you know, um, he almost starts, it's almost like they try to say, okay, you know how you have your horror films and, you know, you have your possessed characters. It's almost like they tried to say that, oh, the alien that's sending him messages or whatever, his alien side is coming out through puberty and they can't control it because his puberty is going on and he's just growing up and this is what they become on that planet, you know? And it makes somewhat sense, I guess, maybe not, not sure. But overall, it's still stupid because you say to yourself, man, what about all those years that he spent on Earth? You know, it's like none of that stuff, none of those, his parents, they didn't teach him that he's not inferior. Or he's not superior either. Like he's just him. He's just his individual self. And it's just weird because it's like you see him act and do all these things. And you're saying to yourself, why? Why exactly is he doing this? You know? take the world, take the world, okay, I get it, you have superpowers, you're 12 years old, do your thing, man, but overall, then it's like you see a more human side with the character, and he's saying to himself, uh, don't tell my mom, don't tell my father, oh, uh, we shouldn't tell the shirt, because, uh, we, we don't want to do that, it, you know, you just start laughing, because you're saying to yourself, man, why are you so worried about your parents, and stuff like that, but you're literally leaving a fucking signature everywhere you go. Like, literally. He's leaving a signature everywhere he goes. He has his own little fucking symbol. And he's been drawing this fucking notebook. And the parents and the cops, they know it. They're on his trail. And it's like, you know, he kills the sheriff. He kills these people. 
La, la, la. He does whatever the fuck he wants to do. He's Brandon Byers. He's Superman. This is Earth, whatever the fuck it is. And he's, he's coming to show up and he's doing his shit and he's running Brandon Wreckage. But what doesn't make sense is why does he care about his parents knowing? And why do they use that as a motive for the character when the character obviously shows that he doesn't have his human side anymore in the second side, second act of the film? You know, by the second act, he's completely thrown out the factor of I have ties to family members. I have ties to the earth. He, he just throws it out because he's like, oh, take the world. I'm superior. And then he cares about his family. And you don't really get you don't get much of. You know, he's possessed or he's corrupted or there's, there's really not much of that. They don't really stress that. And overall, they, they resort into using the horror elements. They resort into using the uh, fucked up deaths. And those deaths are amazing. And those deaths are truly amazing. But overall, it just makes no sense because it doesn't add up, you know. He doesn't have... We, we, we shouldn't tell my parents. Uh, and then you kill your fucking uncle. It's just... I don't get it. And then you leave your little stupid signature everywhere you go. It's just a fucking joke. Like, why? What, what am I watching? You know? You know, he's like, take the world. But he cares about his parents. And he... It's like, you know, writers, stick with something. You know, make your character continue the continuity. This is supposed to be the script. So supervisor's job, continue script continuity. And it's like, I didn't see that in this film. This film lost it.